In 1775, the Continental Congress created the Chaplain Corps. Under the command of General George Washington, each soldier was required to attend worship service every Sunday. While other armies advanced on their feet, Washington's troops advanced on their knees. It's time for the Chaplain's Report with Caleb Colquitt on tactics. Chaplain's Report today comes from the Psalms, and I thought it might be fun to do a little series on the 42nd Psalm, which is one that got really popular because there's a hymn that is based off of this psalm, which is funny because it's a, a song based on a song. But anyway, because uh, <laughs> that, of course, is what the psalms are, right? They're, they're the songbook of the Jewish people, essentially. And if sung in Hebrew, they actually do have melody and rhythm and you can't sing them. So in Psalm 42, we're going to go ahead because they're, it's essentially broken into three verses, three segments. And we're going to go into depth. One thing that's important to note here is we don't actually know who the author of the 42nd Psalm is. We're just not sure about it. But a lot of people speculate, and this is a theory that I actually subscribe to, a lot of people speculate that it was David, and they speculate that this time took place when he was separated from Israel because of fleeing from Saul. And so we're going to discuss that, and, and we'll see some of the reasons why that speculation may very well be true. But let's go ahead and look at the first four verses of Psalm 42. As the deer pants for the water, Brooks, so my soul pants for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? My tears have been my food day and night, while they say to me all day long, Where is your God? These things I remember, and I pour out my soul within me. For I used to go along with the throng and lead them in procession to the house of God, with the voice of joy and thanksgiving, a multitude keeping festival. You can really see in the symbolism and with the psalmist there just right out saying it, that the overarching idea here, is a missing of God, a missing of God's presence. And the symbolism used there is really powerful because when a deer starts looking for water, they don't stop until they found it. When a deer is, is looking out some kind of trying to find a source of water, they do so with eagerness, and they are, of course, overjoyed when they find it because that was the thing that they needed, the thing that they were seeking after. And so the symbolism here is that that is the way that we ought to be seeking out God, that we should have a thirst. Our soul should be thirsty for God, for his word, for his precepts, his goodness. Those are all things that we should desire, just like a deer desires a drink of water when he is thirsty. And so in the same sense, this is the way that we ought to be seeking God every single day, that just like a deer, when all of a sudden it comes time and we know, hey, it's God time. Whether it be a time of prayer or fasting or reading our scripture or going to worship service, that we are determined to get near God, and we do not stop until that need has been fulfilled. So there really is a lesson here in understanding the way that we ought to be seeking after God, and it's something that sometimes is difficult, sometimes is very easy. Sometimes we reach out to God almost instinctively, and sometimes it's very difficult to feel His presence. But regardless of what time that we're in, that desire is not something that should change. We should constantly be seeking after God and seeking to do His will. Now, the second part of this is that his soul is crying out for God's presence. Essentially, you think about it as just sort of a feral scream that he's, he's calling out to God, he's desperate, he wants God to be with him. This is, again, instructive for us as to how we should desire God. That whether it's a time of trouble or a time that we feel that we need God, or just because we are aware of how inadequate we are by ourselves, and because we want to be near God and have a communion with Him, 
our soul should be constantly crying out for God to be with us. We should want that kind of close-knit relationship with him constantly. And that's the thing that the psalmist is trying to convey here. And because of that, you'll notice that he's talking about how he's been crying, that his tears have been his food all day and night, and that uh, people have been saying to him, where is his God? So I think that it's really important that it hurts him, that God is not with him. But I think another secondary point that's being made here is it also hurts him that other people can see that God is not with him. Now, maybe this is a time that the psalmist has been suffering some kind of great loss or he has been engaged in some kind of sinful activity where he doesn't really feel God's presence, but it's also obvious to other people that God is not there with him. Now, there's a couple different ways to understand this. First of all, maybe the way that other people are noticing where is your God is because this was a upright, righteous man whoever it was, whether it was David or somebody else. And because of that, because some kind of rift has been created between him and God, this man is not himself. So in other words, this man, God was such an integral part of his life that they can tell without him even bringing up the fact that he's going through something spiritually by his demeanor or his behavior, they're saying, uh, something's off with this guy. He's not the way that he normally is. And the truth is, that's something that we should be striving for, isn't it? We should be a person that is known by others, whether they are fellow brothers and sisters in Christ or not, that if a rift is ever created between us and God, they immediately notice something's off with him. Because if we have a rift between God and nobody notices, it's a pretty good indication that we were never that close to God in the first place. If they can't really tell a difference between when we feel close to God and when we're not, then maybe that's because we're really not that different either way. That we were not that close to God before and we're not that close to God now, and because of that, it's not really noticeable to them. The second part of that, though, another way that they may know that God is, there's been some kind of distance created between the psalmist and God here is that because he is somebody that seeks after God's president, he's being vocal about it. In other words, he is letting other people know without them just noticing that God's presence is no longer felt by him. And because of that, other people are aware of that. And they're somewhat kind of even mocking, saying, where is your God? And, and we kind of get an indication of that. It would be something that would hurt you if they were mocking your pain. I don't know if that's the kind of that's the kind of uh, idea we're supposed to get from this or not. It's just a secondary lesson that I think both of them actually work. But I think that one thing that could be going on with the psalmist here is that other people are mocking, saying, oh, where is your God to deliver you? Kind of the same way that we see in, in various other passages of the Old Testament, like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego saying, where is your God now? Or when Christ was crucified, where is your God to rescue you now? We could see this almost happening in a mocking sense. And other people are, are on looking and, and mocking whoever the psalmist is, saying, oh, where is your God now? He's cl clearly abandoned you. And then finally, this is a person that is accustomed to worship. Because you'll notice in the fourth verse there, he says, I used to go along with the throng and lead them in procession to the house of God. And he was talking about how joyful he was, how thankful he was for God's blessings at this point, which also leads us to believe that what is going on here is that this is a person that was a leader in worship, somebody that, that went with a large group of people, that it was well known that he was loved by the people in his congregation. This is something that's very likely. This is part of the reason we think it might be David. Because why would somebody be cut off from worship if they want God this badly? Well, a good answer would be, if it is David, and this is the time where he's either fleeing Absalom or fleeing Saul, when he's not able to go into the house of God and worship, 
he's lamenting that he no longer feels that connection to God like when he used to go out into the synagogue. And so that's part of the reason we think it may be David, but whether it is or not, this is clearly a person that has a desire for worship. And this is something that I, I wish that more people in the church had. It's something that on occasion I really wish that I had because normally I'm really excited to go to church. There are times where I'm not. There are times where I feel like I, I don't need to be at worship. I feel like I'm either ashamed of something that I've done, or I don't know, that there's that riff that's been created. And what I love about the attitude in this psalm is, no, no, that's the time you need God the most. That's the time where your soul should be crying out. That's the time where you should want to be in worship the most. And maybe that's what's going on here. Regardless of who the psalmist is, and, and I tend to think that it's David, but it doesn't say, and we're not necessarily sure. But no matter who it is, this is clearly a man that has a thirst and hunger for God's presence in his life, and that is something that all of us should be emulating. Stay the course, friends. Now, I know you're here because you're interested in information on what's going on in the state of Alabama and around the world, and you've come to the right place for that. But it's YouTube, so you could also just be here because you're bored. If you want me to keep making videos to keep you occupied, you need to go ahead and like and subscribe. Otherwise, you're going to have to go back to playing Minesweeper.